All right, we're now going to look at prepping a mesh for a complex transfer of detail. So I'll show you a couple things in this mesh, uh, though it looks like a, a good concept. Here I have these faces that are at a very obtruse angle. And what happens is they are at such a harsh angle that the normals will not calculate quite right. It can also lead to backsided geometry, which is a geometry that pokes through the other side and cause some evil anomalies within a normal map. Same with below. You can see, in fact, here is a backsided polygon right here. So notice I can see the polygon from the other side poking through here, just like that. Well, all this stuff is very easy to clean up within Blender, and that's why I like it so much. And the fact that, you know, you can just concentrate on modeling, and then after the fact, you have such great tools to uh, fix some of this stuff. The one thing about this also we're going to be looking at is mirrored UVs. So keep in mind that this face mask right here is on the other side. So that means I could take this side and delete it out. Oops, L, X, faces. Okay, easily done. Another thing I would highly recommend, well, no, I'm gonna keep that embedded within geometry right there, because if you do not, it will uh, calculate harshly on the other side. So I'm gonna keep that right where it's at. Okay, the first thing I want to do is kind of look at and add a UV map to this. UV maps are very important. So in order to do this, I'm just going to make a new Photoshop document that is 64 by 64 pixels. I'll show you the complete breakdown of this. 64 by 64 pixels, which is really, really small. And all I'm gonna do is create this special little pattern. I'm gonna go view rulers, drag, drag. Take my marquee tool and marquee here. I'm gonna use a dark gray and then I'm gonna use a light gray. So I'm also just use my dark gray first. So on these two corners, we're gonna make dark gray. And then over here, I'm gonna use light gray. Some use black and white. I found that it's too contrasty to look at. So I started using a dark gray and a light gray. Just make sure you get it all the way out or it's gonna have like some weird thing going on with it. It's gonna be hard to look at. There we go. Okay, well that's gonna become a pattern. So I in Photoshop, I just marquee select and edit, define pattern. File new, 1024 by 1024. And then I'm gonna take and fill that with a pattern. So I'm using the fill tool pattern and I'm using that pattern. There we go. Well, uh, now for those people that do not have Photoshop available to them, I'm going to give you this pattern. This is a UV test pattern. You'll probably need it for later on. And what I'm going to do here is take this and highlight all the faces and go image, open image, desktop, there it is. There we go, it should be applied. I should be able to go into texture and it'll tell me what is wrong. Okay, well, I'll show you how to read this thing. 
So first off, I'm going to U, oh, A on the keyboard to highlight all the faces, and then U unwrap everything. Okay, so how it reads is this. You just have to make sure all the squares are the same size. If you do, your life will be better. If you do not, your life will be a little harder. Do they have to be perfectly the same size? No. They do have to be unified in some manner, however. So in this case, I have this section right here. And I have to turn this button off. That way I can highlight each one of these as a shell goes. So this one could be technically bigger. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and it's going to allow me to scale it. G on the keyboard will allow me to move it. So I'm just going to move it right there. And you can see that the squares are now smaller. L, scale, R is to rotate. G is to move, R is to rotate, G is to move. For each one, I'm clicking left to cancel out of the previous. Whoops. And don't hit E, by the way. I'm going to put this here, rotate it ever so slightly, scale it ever so slightly. Just like that. Okay, that's this mouthpiece. So I'm going to put that up here. This is the inside of his helmet, so I'm not really worried too much about that. And this is his eyes. Okay, his eyes aren't going to have too much detail in there, but I am going to put them over here. Oh, how you navigate this thing also, shift, middle mouse button, control, middle mouse button, shift, middle mouse button to pan, control, middle mouse button to scale. So you can see Blender does a nice job of unwrapping, but it doesn't do a very nice job about unifying the scale. Okay, about right there. Put that there. And I'm just going to get these sort of the same size. And this is like playing Tetris, okay? So your idea here is to make all the shells bigger than what Blender suggests and still keep them unified. Okay, this little part right here, I'm not really worried how big or small that is. That's the inside of his face mask. Okay, that means I could take all these, hold shift and then L. S to scale. G to move. And I'm going to even compact these even further. So that's how you do it. You just get them where they're going to fit, scale them up, move them some more until they all fit here correctly. Try to keep them as unified as possible.
and do not overlap them. Okay, just making sure nothing overlaps, nothing's hanging off the side like this one little guy. And there we go. So unwrapping this was pretty simple. We've covered that before as far as unwrapping goes. But what I really wanted to do was show you UV layout. So you can see that these faces right here, um, or the texture right here is actually smaller than over here. But technically in this area, I'm not putting any great detail. The more detail I'm putting in is right here and some right here. That's what I plan to do anyway. Also the horns. So you can see that all the horns are equal. All right, now that we've laid out the UVs, uh, let's look at cleaning up normals and calculating for them and checking them and everything else in the next video.